pretty good. This is Mark Boyle, also known as the moneyless man, as in the past he lived without any money for three years. Nowadays he lives in a self-built cabin in the countryside of Ireland, off the grid, without any modern technologies. Let's have a look how he lives from the land in his cabin and why he chose for this very special lifestyle. Hey guys, uh, welcome to my crib. Um, the jacuzzi is uh, non-existent. Uh, the sauna is out the front. Yeah, this is a cabin I built almost three years ago. Almost entirely out of, out of uh, materials that grow uh, in the surrounding landscape. My house is basically one room. The walls, as you can see, are made from straw bale, uh, covered in lime. Um, these are hazel rods which tie the, the straw bales back to the timber frame. Uh, all of the timber, the roundwood timber, is all from the woods across the road. Um, all carried down by hand and sawn by hand and stripped by hand. I'm a big fan of wood. Um, I try to get as much beautiful wood in as many places as possible. Um, we mostly use spruce, ash, oak and sweet chestnut here. Uh, mostly because that's what's available. Over here we have kind of where I do chop my veg that grows in the garden. Um, I then usually cook on this range, sometimes in the rocket stove outside, but most often in here. Um, bake bread in the oven, cook food up top, and uh, make tea. Uh, we don't have running water here, so um, I collect the spring water, which is in these demijohns. Um, I collect that from the spring, bring it up here. I wash my dishes in a tub. Uh, quite simple. I think when you live in a small house, the key is to have as little things as possible. Um, so you have nothing more than you need. Uh, the last thing you want is clutter. Um, have some bookshelves, as you can see up top. It's my bedroom. I don't have any alarm clock, I don't have any phone. I don't use clock time at all. So I wake up with the light. So in the summertime, right now it's quite early, and in the winter, much later. More like eight o'clock in the winter, half eight. It's important to make best use of that space, and so Right above the range and the heat, we have a kind of a, a pulley system where you, you drop this down, put, put your clothes on, and then raise it up again. And usually, before the night's out, the clothes are dry. Um, it took me six months of maybe seven days a week um, of proper graft. But every single part of the place has got a story behind it. Um, it was built with certain intentions, um, and yeah, I, find that, I find that the most beautiful part of the whole thing. Yeah, it's a very nice atmosphere. Yeah, I guess there's a few reasons why I live in this cabin without electricity and no email, no phone, no washing machine, no electric lighting. I guess the first and the main motivation is always ecological. Um, I came to an understanding maybe 10, 15 years ago that the kind of industrial society was wiping out life on earth. Like that's not even controversial to say anymore. So yeah, so well, 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 it was that kind of external reason first. The over the last three years, the reasons have become much more personal. Like I actually believe that all the technologies that we use, and um, by their very nature, distract us from the here and now, from the present moment, from loved ones, from the the wild natural landscape around us, it's from every aspect of what it means to be human. So I, I guess one of the many benefits that I got from giving up most of these technologies was a real sense of aliveness in the world. You know, technology, they're obviously very useful for certain things, you know. Um, I'm not going to deny their usefulness. But we, we forget that there's also a cost. Like I studied marketing, uh, one thing you become very aware of is that marketing is very good at telling you the pros of a product, but it, it will never tell you what the cons are. It just wants to sell more stuff. Then we just buy it and we, we think about the problems later. 
you know. Um, and so now we, because of some of these technologies, we've got huge social and cultural issues. We've got massive ecological issues. In terms of food, um, I'm kind of moving away, if anything, from agriculture to more like hunter gathering. Um, I actually think that agriculture was the start of many of our uh, humanity's problems in the world, you know, from everything, from, you know, culturally to overpopulation and, you know, more kind of controversial issues like that. Well, you keep your gardens. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, because much of life has been wiped out, like it's not so easy to fish or forage food anymore, mm -hmm. then for me, I do need to grow some food um, to be self-reliant. So I do grow food here like in terms of vegetables and potatoes and all that kind of thing. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is actually depend less on the grown food and um, and feed myself more from um, from fishing and from forage food. When you go fishing, you're just taking one, you're taking a fish, or you can feed a whole family from a pike in the evening. But the ecosystem should be able to sustain that, so it's not that we all can go fishing. This is the problem, and actually, the reason there's not enough fish in the rivers and lakes really is more to do with um, agriculture, because of the runoff of pesticides and insecticides um, into the water, which kills off all the food that fish live on. Yeah, but like if 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 every single person on the planet went fishing tomorrow and living like this, it also wouldn't work. But that's the problem we're in at the moment. You know, where agriculture has led to. And, and the industry has led to 7.5 billion people, and that will become 10 billion most likely. Um, and but, but because there's 10 billion people, then we can't go back to this way of life. So we're in a real conundrum at the moment. We can't go forwards, but we can't go back. So it's hard to know how things are going to unfold in the world in the future. So Mark, I've been reading your book, The Way Home. It's very interesting to read some stories of a different way of living. And now I'm here, it's interesting to, to see things around that remind me of the book. So how did you actually come up with writing a book without technology? Yeah, it's quite a different thing, yeah, because in the past I've always written books uh, using a computer with all the editing tools like copy and paste and delete and so on. And um, So this book's been written by hand, but like anything, I think you quickly learned that actually as soon as you set your mind to it, uh, you figure it out. I've actually really enjoyed doing it this way. Um, carpenters often say um, you have to measure twice, cut once. Uh, and there's a similar thing with writing by hand, it really changes your thinking because you need to think twice, write once. Yeah, it's just so nice to sit in front of this fire and kick back and do some writing in the evening. Yeah. For me it's my perfect house. I love being here. I love the peace and quiet, I love the lack of distraction. But horses for courses, as we say. Um, not everyone would like it, but if it is for you, if it's something, if you can imagine uh, living in something like this, then it's actually much easier than most people think to build. Um, people think you've got to be some kind of expert or master carpenter to build your own house, but it's really not the case. Like I've, I've had very little experience in my life putting up sticks upright and connecting other sticks to them and just making sure that it doesn't fall apart. Like we've been building houses since the beginning of time and we're very very capable of it and we, I think we just need to regain our confidence uh, in doing these things so I would encourage anybody who wants to do something like this to just go and start you know ask people ask your neighbors ask uh, anyone for advice and take it from there it's a lot less complicated than you think um, and the results can be really really rewarding in terms of advice I would say the first thing is look at your addiction to comfort and to technology if you feel that's an unhealthy uh, addiction, then start addressing that. Your own solutions start becoming apparent, you know. Like you kind of realise you're a little bit happier because you're not on your screen 24-7, you know. Um, just going for a walk in the woods or in the mountains at the weekend for a start would realise, God, I, I wish I could spend more time in the outdoors, um, engaging with landscape. Um, and then you start suddenly you start seeing the kind of God like well how could I actually do that how could I actually spend more time outdoors and less time in the office and then people will figure out that themselves you know you got to pay the bills if you've got bills and kids and so on but you also have to ask the question why am I here like this life will fly by for everyone it is flying by you know 
do you really want to get to 70 and think what the hell did I do in my life you know you want to address that question as early as possible and then then kind of design a life yourself in which uh, you can actually be fully human and, um, and be fully alive and it's an important question for me one we don't really have time to ask ourselves enough these days yeah thank you if you want to know more about Mark Boyle and his lifestyle check out his book and you can find the complete interview with Mark on my second channel. Also, stay tuned for a future Smooth Fixed Fishing trip with Mark Boyle himself. Subscribe! And if you like this content, consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching!